Hi guys, it is April from Getting Cocoa With It. Today we're doing another round of Con Marie with me. I am decluttering my bookshelves because they're a hot mess. Uh, let's get into it. So today we are attacking another thriller shelf. I didn't realize how many thriller shelves I have. It's kind of insane. Um, and this is not the last one. I think they have one left and then we'll be through with thrillers slash horror. But yeah, today we're attacking thrillers and I'm doing this because my bookshelves just look terrible. They're double stacked and they're very messy and they're not bringing me joy when I go to my bookshelves anymore. So the whole plan is declutter that that doesn't bring me joy just like the KonMari method would have you do, um, and then keep the rest. And I wanna get like really excited when I go to my shelves again. So I have 26 books here that I need to go through. I need to bring it down to 20. This is rule number one. I can't really have more than 20 books on one shelf. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'll go through them one by one. And then I have a little like loophole for myself um, because I'm smart and obsessively hoard books. Uh, so I can keep two and put them on the limbo shelf. Um, this shelf is for books that I'm just not sure about. I don't know if I want to read them or not. I don't know what to do with them. They can go there. If for some reason I am going through this shelf and really struggle and I have like 21 books or something that I really want to keep and I could not bring it back down to 20 I have to go over to my limbo shelf and take a book off of there to basically make it all even Let's see if I can do this So the first book is a keeper. It's unraveling Oliver by Liz Nugent. Liz Nugent is an amazing writer She's such a great thriller author. She writes really screwed up characters and you often read from their perspective and it's really uncomfortable a lot of the time. Um, she's a character-driven thriller writer, and I love her, and I really loved Unraveling Oliver, where you meet a man who has put his wife in a coma, and you peel back the layers to Oliver and find out why he is the way he is and why he did what he did, um, which was putting his wife in a coma. So good, I really liked it keeping it. Next is Always Watching by Chevy Stevens. This is about a woman who works in a psychiatric hospital and she's a doctor. Um, she meets uh, a woman who comes in um, after an attempted suicide and our main character Nadine is trying to bring out what happened that would force her to do that and it makes her go down the path of like what happened in her childhood. This isn't like super exciting to me. I, I just don't know if this is for me. I might put this on my limbo pile. It's also a library copy um, that I got at a library sale. I'm just not sure. So I'm gonna put it on my limbo pile and see where it lands in the end because I can only have two of those. Now we've got a whole series next and I'm not getting rid of any of these because they're Kate Atkinson. So case histories, um, one Good Turn, When Will There Be Good News, and Started Early Took My Dog. And this is the Jackson Brody series. This is a detective series. As you know, I don't get on with those most of the time. But I love Kate Atkinson. I adore her writing. She is such an amazing writer. So I'm keeping all of these in the hopes that I will finally find a detective series that works for me. So these are all staying. The Child Finder is next. This is by Renee Dunfield. And I've heard very mixed things about this. This is about a woman who she herself went missing when she was a child. And now her line of work is finding missing children. And she meets a family who lost their daughter. Um, and she's trying to find her. I personally want to keep this like I know that this has a lot of mixed reviews. But there's something about this that really intrigues me, so I'm keeping it. Let Me Lie is by Claire McIntosh. I think this is one of her latest. And this is about a pregnant woman 
um, who really misses her parents. Her parents died somewhat recently, um, and the coroner essentially said that um, it was suicide. She doesn't know if she believes that. And as she's, you know, about to give birth to her daughter, or she, or, oh no, she just had a baby. It's not that she's pregnant, she had a baby. Um, because of that situation, it's made her look at it a bit differently and just thinks, no, no, they, they wouldn't have left me like that. I really want to keep this because I do want to read this for sure, so keeping it. Apart in the Dark is um, novellas by Anya Alborn. We've got The Pretty Ones here and I Call Upon Thee. I read The Pretty Ones, felt just okay about it, but I haven't read I Call Upon Thee yet, and so I'd like to keep this because I want to get to know this, this author more. She's a female horror writer. And I'd like to read more female horror writers, um, so I'm keeping it. The Wolf Road by Beth Lewis is about a girl who actually was lost in the woods when she was young, and this hunter took her on, essentially, and kept her and taught her the lay of the land, how, how to survive. Um, and in recent months, she's learned that this man who has always helped her is actually a killer and she is trying to get away from him and I think that he's like potentially after her it does sound really good I want to keep it um, it's got a blurb on the back from Paul Tremblay which says a white knuckle trip through a gritty frightening and all too plausible post-apocalyptic uh, post-apocalypse and that's all I need so I'm keeping it Next is The French Girl by Lexi Elliott. This has had mixed reviews. It's about a group of um, college kids that go to this summer house and there's a French girl next door who like mingles in with them. Um, she disappears um, after. And then a decade later, later, they find her body near this house and so the question is who killed her um because of the mixed reviews i'm gonna put this on my um limbo shelf because i just i'm not quite sure i'm leaning towards keeping it but i'm not quite sure the death of mrs westaway i'm absolutely keeping even though ruth Ware and i don't always get along um but this is kind of gothic a little bit it's about a woman who is kind of down on her luck she uh, she's a tarot card reader um, and she suddenly is approached and is given all sorts of money and I think she's given uh, an estate she doesn't know this person uh, who has died and so she's like this is a mistake but I'm just going with it and then she moves to the house and it's all sorts of creepy so I feel like this is this nice little blend of of um, thriller and ho like there's horror elements here and I love that so I'm absolutely keeping this. The Silence is a an apocalyptic story that I really enjoyed. Um, this is about a world in which silence is key because there are these creatures that have been unearthed from the ground and they hunt by sound and and we follow a deaf girl and her family trying to survive and I really enjoyed it so I'm gonna keep this too. Lars Kepler's The Hypnotist. I think this might be one of the first in this series. Now this is a detective series and you know how I feel about those but I've heard really good things about Lars Kepler and in particular this translator of this book um, so I want to keep it. This follows a detective who has this case where an entire family is murdered. There is only one survivor and it's a boy and he has suffered more than 100 knife wounds and he can't talk like he's left in a catatonic state um, and is trying to get the information out of this kid uh, which sounds great so I'm going to keep it. Next is Still Missing by Chevy Stevens. This is about a woman who is ready to find out more about her birth parents. She was adopted and she's always been curious. She finds her birth mother and she's completely completely rejected by her and it's because 
her birth mother was the only survivor of a an escaped killer who had been hunting women every summer for decades. Um, and she is the, the offspring of that terrible situation. Uh, it That whole premise sounds great, so I'm gonna keep that. The Crow Girl. This is a, I think it's Icelandic or Swedish um, police procedural. I've heard that it's very slow and kind of hard hitting. I'm gonna let it go. I, I've thought a lot about this one and I just, I'm not a huge police procedural kind of person. I struggle with anything with detectives and because I've heard it so slow, like I can only imagine that that will not sit well with me. So I think I'm just gonna let it go and wish it well on its way. The Perfect Girl is by Jilly McMillan or Gilly McMillan. And this is about a prodigy. She's 17 years old. Um, and three years ago, she was involved in a tragic, tragic incident that left three classmates dead. She is somehow involved in those deaths and she's served her time. And now her family wants to move on and basically pretend that that never happened. Um, I don't know what it is about this, but I don't know if I want to read this. I think I'm just gonna let it go. I'm curious a little bit, but not so curious that I want to keep it. Ooh. Tana French, Broken Harbor. This is another detective series, but Tana French does this neat thing where she follows a group of police detectives, I think in Ireland, if I'm not mistaken. And I think it's called the Dublin Murder Squad. And you meet a detective in every single book that she does, but it's a new detective. And this is about a family that is found dead um, in this like newly constructed neighborhood. And this was one of my mom's favorites of all of this series. Um, I started the first one and I wasn't overly in into it, um, but I'm going to give this one a shot. And then if I don't like this one, I'm just gonna like step away from Tana French. So I'm keeping it. We shall see. Next is The Shining Girls by Lauren Bukes. This is about a serial killer who can time travel. Time traveling freaks me out. Like I don't, it doesn't freak me out. I just, when I hear that the book is about time travel, I usually want to run away screaming because I never like those stories. Um, I think I'm gonna put this on the limbo pile because I have heard good things about this. I'm not sold in any way, shape or form but we'll see where it lands in the end. Next is Special Topics of Calamity Physics. A lot of people say that if you liked The Secret History, you should read this. I started The Secret History when I'm filming this. I don't know if I'll have picked it up by the time you're watching this. Um, I'm filming this in June, so um, we'll see. But. I picked it up at the beginning of 2019 um, reading uh, The Secret History and I'm really struggling with it. I'm finding the characters really annoying, very annoying, and I can't get past it. So I'm not sure about this. I do know that I like Marisha Pessel. I really loved Night Film, so I'm not sure. I might put this on the limbo pile as well and see where I land in the end. I'm kind of leaning towards keeping it because I don't mind that it's all taking place at a school um, or anything like that. I just, I don't want like super pompous characters. Do you know what I mean? I just don't like that. So limbo pile and then we'll see where it lands. Next up is Island of Lost Girls by Jennifer McMahon. This is about a woman who sees a little girl abducted um, at a gas station and she decides that she wants to like try to help the investigation um, but it brings back all sorts of memories of a childhood friend of hers who also went missing years and years before. So I just don't think I'm gonna read this. Uh, it doesn't sound bad. It just doesn't sound like something I'm desperate to read. So I'm just gonna let it go and that's that. The People at number nine is about a couple who moved to this 
lovely neighborhood and they're getting to know their neighbors, this one couple in particular, and they're like very excited because they're lovely until they ask them to do something um, that has shattering consequences for all of them. I'm gonna let this go. This sounds more domestic thriller than anything else and I usually am not really drawn to those in the end so I'm just gonna let it go and say goodbye. The coma is about a man who wakes up from a coma um, after he's been attacked on a subway train and he can't really remember anything from before so it's like a psychological drama. Um, you know, I think when I picked this up, I thought it was going to be a little bit more like Ian Reid. Um, but just the what I'm reading, I, I just read a few little, you know, pages from here. And it's not reading that way, so I'm going to let it go. Social Misconduct is about a woman who is approached um, to get a brand new iPhone. And then a week after she gets the iPhone, she's being harassed in a major way. This was sent to me um, unsolicited by the publisher. And I just, there was never anything about it that seemed super interesting to me. So I think I'm just going to let it go. The Snowman is a Joe Nesbo book, which I enjoyed. However, I've decided to let this whole series go because I was not overly committed to the series or the detective so I'm gonna let it go but I did enjoy it wasn't bad and then thrice the brinded cat hath mewed is a Christmas kind of cozy mystery it's a Flavia, Flavia de Luce mystery and I read the sweetness at the bottom of the pie many years ago now and I remember enjoying it so I'm gonna keep this because it would be a nice thing to read at Christmas time and my sister got this for me so I would like to read this at Christmas time so we are in a super good spot I was able to get rid of seven books off of my shelves I had 26 to begin with now I'm down to 19 um, so that's really good um, and I have two that I can put on my limbo shelf and I can put one back if I want to, which I think I might do. Firstly, I'm going to ditch a book and it's going to be always watching. This is just something about it that I wasn't super into. So that's going to go as well. And then the books that I'm left with are The French Girl, The Shining Girls, and Special Topics in Calamity Physics. I think I wanna keep Special Topics because I really enjoy Marisha Pestle's writing so much. So I'm going to keep that and then put The Shining Girls and The French Girl onto that limbo pile. So I did it and I feel really happy with all of these decisions. <clears throat> Let me know in the comments below if there were a books that I got rid of that you really enjoyed. Um, I know everyone's different and everyone's reading tastes are so different but I feel pretty good about the ones that I got rid of. Um, so yes, I hope that you guys are doing well and I will see you in another Con Marie with me. Bye guys.